Hello students. Welcome to a video lecture on the short story Misery written by Anton Chekhov. Anton Chekhov is a very prolific short story writer and dramatist who was born in the year 1860 and died in 1904. He was a doctor by profession. He is a great short story writer and dramatist. He has taken characters from the real life situations. We also find a lot of humor in his uh, short stories and one act plays. He has written 17 plays and more than 600 short stories. Some of his uh, notable short stories are Mortley Stories which was published in 1886, In the Twilight in 1887, Children in 19, sorry, 1889, Gloomy People in 1890 and uh, some of his well-known plays are The Seagull in 1896, Uncle Vanya in 1897, Three Sisters in 1901 and The Cherry Orchard in 1904. So this uh, short story, Misery, is about a sledge driver and uh, a mare. So we find uh, very few characters in this story. So the important characters here are Iona Potapov, who is a sledge driver. And then we see the mare. And there is also a, a reference of the customers. The first one is a man in military uniform. And then the second, we find three young men. The story begins in the twilight of evening. Big flakes of wet snow is seen on the streets. The lamps are just lighted. And uh, Potapov, the sledge driver, is all in white looking like a ghost. He is actually grieving over the loss of his son. He sits on the box of his sledge. His uh, little mare is also white and motionless because they are waiting for a customer. So after uh, much waiting, Iona gets his first passenger. So this first customer is a military officer. He wants to travel to a place called Vybotskia. So after much waiting, he hears uh, the loud uh, noise. Sledge to Vybotskia, sledge. And suddenly he sees this uh, officer in military overcoat. And he approaches and uh, he asks Iona to take him to Iborskia. So the officer uh, gets into the sledge and the sledge driver clicks to the horse. He rises uh, in his seat. And now the military officer shouts at Iona for driving carelessly. He shouts, where are you showing you devil? Where the hell are you going? Keep to the right. You don't know how to drive. And uh, as they move further, okay, there is a coachman driving a carriage. He also swears at him. And uh, next they also come across a pedestrian crossing the roads, looking angrily at Iona. So the military officer is a bit angry with him 
But on the other hand, Yona tries to get the sympathy of the military officer. He tells him in a, a husky voice, My son, uh, my son died this week, sir. When the officer asked him how it happened, he again continues, Who can tell? It must have been from fever. He lay three days in the hospital and then he died. God's will. But though uh, Iona was trying to narrate his story to the military officer, he was not in a mood to listen to him. Instead, he started shouting at him. He wanted to reach Vaibhokskya as early as possible. And finally, they, they reach Vaibhokskya. The officer gets down and uh, Yona now waits there near a restaurant for his next trip. So after uh, waiting near the restaurant for some time, Yona gets his second trip. He meets three men, two of them tall and thin and uh, one who is very short and hunchbacked. He was rude and obnoxious. So uh, these three men, they wanted to travel to the police bridge and uh, they demanded to take them to police bridge for 20 kopecks. So 20 kopecks is a very meager amount, but still Yona decides to take this trip because he had, he had been waiting there for about two hours. So uh, though it was not a fair price, Yona takes the trip and the three men use lot of abusive language during the course of the journey. So now they were, they started arguing for the seat. So they decided the hunchback would stand for some time while the other two would sit. And then uh, their conversation shifted to the brandy that they drank the previous night. And uh, Yona was very hopeful that at least these three passengers would try to listen to his story. So he started uh, turning towards them with a sympathetic ear. He looked round once more and said, This week uh, my son died. They were not in a mood to listen to Yona. The hunchback replied with a sigh, We shall all die. And uh, he started wiping his lips after coughing. Another tall, tall man in the group, he asked uh, Yona whether he was married. And Yona replies, The only wife for me now is the damned earth. And then he cries, the grave that is here, my son is dead and I am alive. It's a strange thing. Death has come in at the wrong door. Instead of coming for me, it went for my son. Instead of coming for me, it went for my son. Yona now turns round to tell them how his son died. But they were not in the mood to listen to him. And finally, he drove them to their destination. And when they reached there, they left immediately. Yona was now under complete loneliness. He gazed for a while after they disappear into a dark entry. 
he felt alone. There was absolute silence for him. All those thoughts that he tried to forget came back to his mind and tears came rolling in his eyes. He again looked restlessly among the crowds moving so that thinking that he would at least find somebody to talk to. He now looks at those thousands of people moving thinking at least one would listen to him. But the crowd doesn't mind neither his misery nor him. His misery is immense beyond any bound. If Yona's heart was to burst and his misery to flow out, it would flood the whole world. Now the climate becomes unfavorable for Yona. He also finds it difficult to overcome the pain that he has in his mind. He is left alone with all the suffering that he has kept in his mind. Though the city is noisy, he is silent. He finds himself isolated from the crowd. Now his glance rests on a house porter who is carrying a parcel. He thinks at least he can start a conversation with this man. So he asks him, what time will it be, friend? And he gets a reply immediately, going on for 10. Why have you stopped here? Drive on. He does not wait to continue a conversation with Yona. So now he realizes that he cannot beg people to listen to him. So he decides to return to his yard and he reaches the yard and finds his fellow drivers exhausted, sleeping. Yona spends there one and a half hours and now he regrets for coming there so early. I have not earned enough to pay for the oats even, he thinks. That's why I am so miserable. And he realizes that a man who, who knows how to do his work, who has had enough to eat and whose horse has had enough to eat is always at ease. So. Now he notices a young cabman who gets up from his sleep to drink some water. So he decides at least he can tell his story to him. But he doesn't listen to him and he returns back to his sleep. But still, Iona longs to narrate his story to somebody. He wants to tell how his son Kusma Ionich was taken ill, how he suffered, what he said before he died, how he died, his funeral, the visit to the hospital to get his son's clothes. He has all these things kept inside his heart. He has nobody to talk to, to share his inner feelings. He also wants to talk about his daughter, Anisia, who stays in the country. How could a father who has lost his only son sleep peacefully? Not feeling sleepy, he wakes up. He goes to have a look at his mare. And Iona talks to his mare. 
are you manchi and he tells that she has to be satisfied with the hay that has given her because they have not earned enough to get her oats and now he continues talking to the mayor because he did not find anybody to share his inner thoughts he tells the mayor i have grown too old to drive my son ought to be driving not i he was a real cab man he ought to have lived he was a real cab man and he ought to have lived so the thought of his only son continue to trouble his mind he cannot help it but to talk to the mayor so he goes near her and talks to the mayor that's how it is old girl kusma ionich is gone he said goodbye to me he went and died for no reason he becomes very emotional he finally finds somebody to whom he can share his grief and he continues to the mayor and he asks her now suppose you have a little colt and you were own mother to that little colt and all at once the same little colt went and died you would be sorry wouldn't you so the little mare munches the hay and listens to yona and she consoles yona by breathing on her master's hands yona at last finds somebody to whom he can share he identifies himself with the horse and tells her all his misery so uh, in this short story we come across uh, a number of themes the themes like poverty urban life capitalism miseries of life need for companionship the story examines the human condition in an urban setting the loneliness one feels in the city life the lack of sympathy and kindness the misery is caused to iona especially we find uh, the misery of cold weather the misery of poverty the misery of losing a young son by an old man and also the misery of uh, not having anyone to share in life his loneliness the story uh, also throws light on capitalism the division of uh, the society into the rich and the poor here we find that you uh, and i is a victim of capitalism we find uh, the rich and the poor the unequal distribution of wealth another point to highlight is poverty it is a sad fate of the poor so in the story we find that uh, the poor cannot help each other when yona comes home with uh, the wages that he has earned he finds that it is not enough to even feed uh, his mare there is nobody who can support him so uh, though the poor cannot help each other 
Even the rich do not help the poor either. Another very important theme that we find here is the need for companionship. People have lost touch with humanity. In the story we find there is nobody to listen to Yona. Everybody is busy in their, in their life. So uh, the story is narrated from uh, the point of view of Yona. So the writer has used uh, the thir third person narrative which highlights Yona's character. So we find that uh, the mayor is a representation of Yona himself, his poverty and his loneliness. We also come across uh, some of the characters. To make a character study, Yona Potapov, the sledge driver. We have uh, his customers, the military man, then we have uh, the three young men. We find a lot of people, the crowd and even the mayor. So uh, this particular story throws light on uh, many of these aspects when we make a study of these characters. Hope uh, you will read the lesson and look deeper into the story with these things in your mind. Thank you.